So are you one of those that are thinking about maybe moving from California or Seattle or New York? Now that we don't have to be in a certain location to do our jobs and people are working from home, this is becoming a real viable option for the first time for a lot of people. Well, we're going to delve into five areas you really need to consider before you take that leap. Coming up next. Hi, everybody. My name is Dee Burks, and this is Retirement Rescue, where we talk about how to make money, save money, and create a retirement from nothing. Well, now may be the time for you to make that move you've always thought about because the way we work has fundamentally changed. And for a lot of people, it's opening doors. But the idea of moving away from something you've always known or from something you're comfortable with can be really kind of scary. And it should be. There are a lot of things to consider when you think about moving yourself or your family across the country. So we're going to talk about five of those big areas and what you have to consider. Now, number one, is to check your assumptions. We all have assumptions that somewhere we move to is going to be largely the same as where we came from. I mean, this is basically the U.S. It's kind of all the same, right? No. There are huge differences, not only between urban and rural, which are differences within each and every state, but also between states. States are structured differently, the costs are different, the taxes are different, the culture is different. There are a lot of things to consider. So the first thing you need to do when you think about moving to a different area is stop that immediate thought of, oh, but this is how they do it in California. Doesn't matter how they do it in California or New York or Seattle. What matters is how they do those important functions where you're going. And you need to know the differences between the two in order to make an informed decision. Now, number two, the first thing most of us do if we consider a move to a different area is talk to friends and family. Or we call and we talk to maybe the chamber or we talk to people who live in the area. Well, you need to be really, really careful who you take advice from. People like the chamber, they're marketing the town. They're going to tell you it's fabulous, even if it's a dump. So you've got to be really careful about that. Also, locals. If you call Birmingham, Alabama, and you're from California, they're not even going to know what to tell you if they've always lived there. They're not going to know the differences between Alabama and California. They're not even going to tell you immediately those things that are going to impact your life. The best thing you can do are find people who have moved to that area from where you came from, let's just say California, recently. This is relatively easy to do. You can hop onto online forums, Facebook groups for that area and ask, hey, has anyone moved to this area in the last few years and can you kind of give me a rundown of the differences between there and California. And they'll hop on and do it. People love to help people that way, especially if they've had a good experience. They'll hop on. And even if they've had some negative experiences, they'll tell you, hey, guess what? This is really different. Or guess what? You need to figure in these costs. Or, you know, things you really need to know that are pertinent to you moving to that specific location. It's also important to listen to people who are in your age group who have the same concerns. If you are talking to someone, let's just say in Birmingham, in a new location that you're going to be going to, and they're retired, but you have small children, it's not going to help you a lot. You need to talk to someone from there who has small children. They can tell you about the schools. They can tell you about daycare. They can tell you about the activities for small children something a retired person may not necessarily be up on. So be really careful and be very specific about what you're interested in knowing when you hop on one of these forums. Now, number three, of course, is cost. Uh, most people who are looking to relocate, they do so either for cost or lifestyle or both. But cost is a big factor. There are many people moving to states that have low to no 
income tax. But realize every state collects taxes. And just because a state doesn't have income tax, it does not mean there are other taxes that are going to be higher. Let's take some examples. Maybe your state has an income tax, but the property taxes are relatively low. And you move to a state with no income tax, well, maybe those property taxes are sky high. That's something to investigate. Maybe you're planning to move to a state like Florida. And a lot of people move there because there aren't income taxes, but homeowner's insurance especially in hurricane-prone areas, which is basically almost the whole state, but definitely in the high hurricane areas, is very expensive and almost impossible to get. So those are things you have to investigate and you have to weigh those out. There are also surprises for a lot of people. Um, I moved from Texas to New Mexico. And I knew, you know, there's a state income tax. Okay, it's pretty low for New Mexico. I thought the trade-off for living in the mountains was a good trade-off. But there were also a lot of things that were a surprise to me. I was surprised banking is taxed. Like every time you make an ATM withdrawal, there's a tax on it. Every single thing you do, banking is taxed. Professional services are taxed. Medical services, doctor's visits, they're taxed and they weren't in Texas. That was a big surprise to me. Now on the other side, the property taxes in New Mexico where I live are minuscule. So everything is kind of a trade-off and those are the things you need to investigate. One other area that people sometimes overlook is their vehicle. If you are in somewhere like California, the vehicle registration fees you pay yearly are very, very high. For a vehicle like I drive, a truck, you could pay $800 to $1,000 a year. In Texas, it was $72. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous it's so low. But here again, you don't know if you don't ask. So those are things you need to really think about. Every single thing, there are trade-offs. And you're going to have to put the math together to figure out, okay, is this a good move? Number four, utilities. <laughs> You know, everyone assumes utilities are largely the same, and here again, they're not. Not only do they vary between states, but they vary between cities and rural locations. And when I say utilities, I'm talking about electric, nat uh, natural gas, and water, uh, your basic utilities. Now, you can call these utility companies for a particular address you're looking at, and you can ask them what the average utilities are for that location. This is not private information. It belongs to the address, not the person. So you can call and ask and they'll tell you. And here again, this is one of those questions you ask the people at the location who already live there, what are utility prices like? Now let's talk specifically about water. If you're from an area where you never even think about your water, you just turn the faucet on and it's there, and it's always been there and you don't think about it and you're moving to an area like that's desert or a high desert, semi-desert, water is a huge deal. Uh, when I lived in Amarillo, I didn't think about water. I mean, it came from Lake Meredith and some wells. I mean, you don't really think about it. It's just there. <laughs> but when you move to an area, a rural area especially, you want to know where your water comes from. You want to know if there's mining activity or has been in the past. Uh, some water has heavy metals in it. Some water has industrial waste in it. There's a history there. Almost every city or town will have information about their water source, their water purity, their water quality on their website. So be sure you check it out. That's one of those things. People will check out the rates but they don't ask where it comes from. And that's very important. Um, a lot of times when you are looking at property, and this happens all the time where I live, and there's a piece of property that's really cheap, people who aren't from here will say, oh, that's great, it's so cheap. And I'm like, okay, there's a reason. And part of that reason a lot of times is water. There's no water source. So you have to be really careful if you're going to a location you are unfamiliar with and talk to people who have moved there and who might know anything like that that you need to know that's really important. It will affect your buying decisions. 
So be sure and check those things out. That information is readily available. I also want to uh, mention internet access. These days, we are able to move because we work from home. Well, you really need to understand what the options are for internet access. It's easy to assume, well, everybody has internet. No, they don't. Nor do they have cell coverage everywhere. I realize to some people that makes it sound like, oh, well, that's only in very rural areas. No, I live in the mountains. It's here too. There are not options available in a lot of locations that you may need to work effectively. For example, when someone comes to the area I live in and says, oh, do y'all have good internet? People will say, oh, yeah, it's great. Those are the people that are only checking their email. They're not doing multiple Zoom conferences. They're not needing an upload speed. They're not doing videos like a YouTube channel and uploading them. They're not needing to be constantly connected like they're not trading stocks. Big deal. <laughs> they're not needing to be constantly connected. So it doesn't matter if the internet's intermittent, which it is a lot of times, if there's zero upload speed, because that's a big deal. I have to go somewhere else to upload videos because my home internet will not upload the videos. And it's not even available residentially to get internet that will do that. So be sure and check those things out. Don't assume it's available everywhere. It may or may not be. And the last thing I want to mention is education. Whether you are planning to take online classes yourself, you need to do personal development classes, um, professional certifications, that kind of thing. Here again, your internet's going to be important. But you also want to know what's available locally. What do local colleges offer? What are the local schools for children? Just because you're used to having private school or charter school or good public schools, doesn't mean those things will exist where you're going, even in some metropolitan areas. Every state treats education differently. And you will have some states where they concentrate the resources in urban areas, and some states where it's much more even, and even rural areas have very, very good education. But that is something you have to really investigate, depending on exactly where you go. So be sure to make you a list of questions to ask the people who live there the questions that are important to you. And be sure you go and check it out. Always go and do a visit or two or six. <laughs> Don't hesitate to go and spend a week. Uh, look at the grocery stores. Look at where you'll be shopping. Uh, look at the options for shipping. By the way, not everywhere has FedEx. Where I live, Prime Amazon is four days rural location in the mountains. So be sure you know those things before you make a decision. But all of these things will help you to make a good informed decision. And if you're thinking about moving to save money, create that retirement from nothing, be able to put money back and live the life that you want, now's the time. Now if you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe and I'll see you next time.